So welcome all to this new edition of the Immunet paper of the month. We are Javier and Mikhail from the EULA Immunet Journal Club. Mikhail? Yeah, and today we are going to discuss a paper that uh, was recently published in Rheumatology Oxford and results from an uh, international collaboration, a large international collabor uh, collaboration. So we have invited two of the authors so for, uh, let me introduce the first author of the paper, Dr. Delphine uh, Courvoisier, and uh, uh, also uh, Dr. Kim Laupa uh, from the Department of Rheumatology, University Hospital, Geneva, Switzerland. So welcome, uh, Delphine and uh, Kim, bonjour. And your paper was selected for this paper of the month edition, so congratulations. And thank you very much for your time and for sharing your results with us. So first of all, can you please introduce the title of your paper? So this paper is called The Impact of Seropositivity on the Effectiveness of Biologic anti rheumatic Agents Result from a Collaboration of 16 Registries. Thank you very much. Um, let's start with the interview. Let's start with the question. So first of all, what is a registry and why it's important for clinical research? What, which are the advantages of using uh, registries instead of uh, randomized clinical trials, for instance? Well, first of all, let me say that um, I'm quite happy to be with uh, Kim Lauper because she's a rheumatologist and I'm an epidemiologist, but I'm not a medical doctor. So we'll share the questions. I will answer questions about epidemiology and Kim will complement because she is also an epidemiologist, but then she will answer any clinical, really clinical questions. About registries. So the definition of registries is that it's an organized system associated with a database. That Use study methods to collect data that is uniform, clinical or otherwise, to evaluate specified outcomes for a population that will be defined either by a disease, a condition, an exposure, and usually it serves several predetermined scientific, clinical, or policy purposes. For instance, um, some registry will focus more on adverse events, others will focus more on following patients long term to see how um, the trajectories of disease activity. Um, I'll focus a little more on um, the advantages. Well, obviously, the main advantage is that it's very long follow-up and it's real-world patients. So it will show what really happens when you use a specific drug, for instance, or when you use a type of patient. The disadvantages, because there are some, is that the data is also real-world. It's a bit more messy than a nice randomized control trial that only where, where people were only followed for, for instance, 12 weeks very intensively. What was the main research question that you have addressed for this study? So previous research has shown that seropositivity, either through rheumatoid factor or anti citrine -like Linated protein antibodies, ACPA, may be associated with the effectiveness of some biologic DMARDs. Now, evidence on TNFI and uh, rituximab is relatively clear, with no, associa no association of seropositivity and effectiveness for TNFI and a relatively large association for rituximab. But the evidence is not very clear for abatacet and tisilizumab. Thus, the main research question was to compare the impact of seropositivity on drug discontinuation and on effectiveness of BDMARDs in patients with rheumatoid arthritis using, contrary to other previous research, head-to-head -head comparison in a real-world setting. Okay, thank you very much. And with uh, such a sophisticated approach, can you please summarize in simple words uh, the main findings of your study? Well, the main finding was that patients who were seropositive had less drug discontinuation and higher remission and low disease activity rates for all of the non-TNFI BDMRs, but this difference was larger for rituximab, a bit smaller for abatacet, and then marginal for tocilizumab. 
and non for GNFI, as expected. How can you explain these differences across the bio different biologics? This looks like a clinical question. Yeah. So uh, it's probably linked to the different pathogenic mechanism uh, and the, the mechanism of action of each drug. So uh, rituximab uh, kills B cells. And as such, it's not very surprising that he has a superior effect in patients who are seropositive because it's uh, a probably a disease which is more B cell drive driven. Um, for abataceps, um, Abataceps is uh, an inhibitor of T cell co stimulation. So we, we can wonder why does it have so much effect on seropositive patients. But in fact, we know that he has uh, an, an effect on, on the inhibition of antigen presentation um, to the T cell by ACPA and rheumatoid factor producing B cells. We know that uh, Abatacept has been uh, associated with a decrease in synovial B cells, uh, in some circulating memory B cells and levels of immunoglobulin. So uh, we also see why he has an effect in seropositive patients. Tocilizumab had a more marginal effect, but uh, so tocilizumab targets IL-6 and uh, the, the name of IL-6 before, the, the name of the cytokine, it was, it was identified at first as a B cell growth factor and mm -hmm. also an inducer of plasma cell differentiation. So it has also an effect on, on B cells. So we may wonder why TNF alpha does not have so much effect because it has also an effect in B cells, in fact, but probably this is linked more to the physiopathology of seronegative RA, which is currently not very clear. Uh, maybe it's a, a more several disease. Mm -hmm. Some diseases are more like spondyloarthropathy. We, we don't know, really know what are this seronegative RA. So this is why maybe we don't see so much difference with TNF inhibitors. And taking the discontinuation in account, uh, what's the reason of discontinuing the treatment taken into account, uh, into account in, the, in, in your analysis? So unfortunately, no. Um, we did use it a little bit to, um, when we did multiple imputation for mis missing covariate. However, uh, we assumed that when we were computing remission rate or low disease activity rate, we assumed that all patients who discontinued were non-responder. Um, this assumption is very strong. And as registries um, from, from some country consider that when you treat to target, you may stop for remission. It's obviously sometimes incorrect. Um, but it is similar to an intention to treat analysis in uh, randomized control trials. So there are also some positive aspects to that. So in summary, we, we want to do that now. We will research uh, the models to do that are not obvious. And we're actually working in a ULAR task force to clarify how to do that. Um, now, we think that if the discontinuation reasons are similar between the seropositive and seronegative patients, then this approximation should not lead to bias in our estimation of the difference due to seropositivity. So we were confident in our results, even though we did not specifically account for um, reason of discontinuation. May it also be that there was also some confounding by indication. So, for example, it is uh, known for quite some time that, uh, for example, rituximab is more effective in uh, seropositive patients as compared to the seronegative. And in fact, uh, in your study, 95% uh, of all the patients who received rituximab, they were seropositive. So uh, is there also a, a positive caveat for the, for the findings of the study? What do, what do you think? Um, so definitely there was a difference. Indeed, there were more patients on rituximab who are seropositive. Now we adjusted for confounders uh, for choice of treatment, but there could, and there certainly is, some residual confounding. That's the disadvantage, right, of, of observational study. We had to do them, but it doesn't mean that we are, uh, we are not, oh, sorry. It doesn't mean there is no bias at all. And now moving uh, to a next level, I mean, now putting ourselves into the uh, feet of our patients, how can these results benefit our patients for in the clinical setting? 
Mm -hmm. So we always aim to give the best possible treatment to our patients with RE. Um, with this study, the result of this study, it can help us to personalize a bit the choice of BD models using the seropositive state status. So it can get us a bit closer to precision medicine approach, although it's not like perfect, but we, we are getting closer. Okay, so and related to these questions, what can be the next steps to allow the translation of these results into the clinical practice? What could be the, the next perspectives? So I think the results of this study are easily translated into practice. Um, if we have patients with seropositive RA, we have plenty of choice for the treatment. It doesn't really matter a lot the seropositive status for that. But for patients with seron seronegative RA, we should probably use more TNF inhibitors or EL6 inhibitors as the difference in effectiveness was, was less important between patients uh, with seronegative or seropositive RA. And probably um, JAK inhibitors would be effective in a similar way um, as tocizumab, as they also target, importantly, IL-6. We don't know, but it's a situation. Yeah, so Kim, Delfin, thank you very much for the very clear presentation of your study results. So we are now at the end of, the, uh, of this uh, video interview. Uh, we once again thank you and congratulate you uh, uh, and the rest of the team, of course, for winning the uh, paper of the month poll and for your time presenting your results in this interview. And uh, also thank you for collaborating with you, Mildad, on that. Thank you for choosing our paper. Thank you. Thank you.